Well, thanks, Sharif and uh, Mike Craig Morins uh, for inviting me, and uh, Habba Adwa for hosting it. It's uh, it's really um, a, a privilege, uh, one that uh, and a surprise uh, to be able to speak to uh, such creative and progressive uh, crowd. So uh, you'll bear with me, though. I've I've never done anything like this before, so uh, I can't begin to tell you how nervous I am. But uh, nonetheless. Uh, my name, of course, as you know, is Tim Van Dyke, and I own a company called Lunch uh, that I uh, that I start. I'm the founder. Um, I should stress I am by no means an authority on anything, nor am I trained to do anything in relation to running my company. So, uh, it, it's uh, it, you're getting it really uh, from the trenches here uh, on the ground level. Um, I finally uh, it sort of came to terms uh, uh, not too long ago with, with accepting the fact that I can at least refer to myself as an entrepreneur. So I'm proud of that. And it's, uh, again, indicative of being able to speak to you guys. Um, prior to that, uh, you know, I do a number of things. And I still do on a daily basis, uh, anything from janitorial services to uh, general contracting to driving and to just basically serving people soup. So that's uh, pretty much how most days play out. Um, and that, as you could imagine, and part of being the entrepreneur and owner of this company, is uh, pretty all-absorbing. So as a disclaimer to this chat, I, um, I talk too much and about my own company. My, my wife and uh, best friend had a real chuckle that you were all going to be subject to me this evening. So uh, you know, stop me when I keep on babbling. I had about seven emails tonight already reminding me not to babble. Um, and to put that into context, I have one quote and uh, it, it, for the evening. This, this was an amazing one. Uh, it came out, uh, and it puts, puts my talking into context. It, it came out uh, about two weeks after we had opened lunch, and it was on a, uh, a lunch food blog, a city food blog. And I'll, I'll read the quotes. Uh, I walk in, and the guy asks me, your first time here? I nod. Then a huge spiel ensues about how great the place is, where the bread is from, how the muffins are made, where the meat is sourced, how his balls hang. I think there was even some vegan talk in there somewhere. So I figured it would be fun to get that off my chest. I mean, it was interesting to have that come out. And for me at the time, a few years ago, to really try to figure out where, where uh, online reviews came from and really just defend myself. And this will be the, the only time I feel I have to. I, I had to speak to people in that capacity when we opened the location just to let people know what we were doing because at the time it was quite new, it was a new concept. People didn't understand that we had a prepackaged product on the shelf that was made fresh and ready to go. So, you know, when it's your, when it's your baby in so many ways, it was important for me to, to be there and do that. So if you're in the crowd, I, I'm sorry, I do talk too much. Again, I will tonight. Um, so that and the only other thing I should say is, is you know, again, we're, we're, we're a green company, I'm still green, we're growing a lot. Uh, so we're just really in the middle of things. Uh, we're by no means there yet. Uh, we got a long way to go. So again, all my stories, all I can offer you guys is just stories from the trenches right now. Uh, lunch started in, uh, well, I started working on lunch seriously, and by that I mean spending money in uh, 2006. And then uh, we opened the doors in April of 2008, the, the 16th to be exact. Uh, we now have five brick and mortar locations, as we refer to them because the uh, sixth is a truck. And uh, one of the locations is our commissary. It's a centralized kitchen on uh, Le Breton Street in Chinatown that we bought in 2010, and that, that feeds our locations and our expansion. And I, I'm proud to say that on a, on a daily basis right now, we're feeding easily over 1,000 people a day, and we anticipate uh, you know, huge growth over the first part of uh, this year already. Um, so what I'd like to talk about today specifically are um, these three categories of, uh, of what we do. It's uh, uh, making space, making good food, and, um, and making a brand. Um, the, uh, the taglines that I work with, uh, you know, one I have to stress is that I am not, uh, I, I, I'm forced to be creative on a daily basis based on the amount of hats I have to wear. So, you know, you just take things as they come and there's creative solutions. You know, there's no real opportunity in this game to, uh, to, to let things slide. So, you know, that's my level of creativity. But to be, to be frank, I'm, I'm not creative. What, what's blessed the company is our, our creative co collaborations. Um, we, we've got an amazing team. My chef, 
Maltreet Rudam. Um, we've got uh, Al and Luke, Matt, who's here tonight, our staff, of course, all our trades, everyone that we work with, uh, we've really managed to engage and uh, have them sort of embrace the brand and embrace what we're trying to do and just let them flourish in, 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 in our space and our brand. So that's, that's where, we're, you know, where we're ultimately creative. Also, um, we make the best product we can afford to market. I didn't mean that on all levels. Uh, when we when I continue on in terms of what we make, we uh, you know there's the realities to to how it is we, we can do things because I'm I'm by no means a, a rich man, so when it comes to the way we fit things up, when it comes to the way we build product, uh, we, we have to be considerate of how it is that we can attract people to purchase that product. So that's uh, that's how we operate. Um, this I threw up is just uh, another bit of a lark. Uh, this was a day a couple of years ago. My wife. Um, left me alone with the kids, which is fine, but I was pissed uh, and I really wanted uh, to you know, enjoy a nice lunch. Saturdays were valuable to me. And uh, anyhow, so I went to the piggy market and I bought a pile of pea meal bacon, some Bose mustard, and uh, you had know, to stop by the bagel shop, grab the bagel. There happened to be some stale smart food in the, in the cupboard at the, kid, you know, the house, so we went for it in the beer. And uh, that's actually mignon de Charlevoix that's melted on top. I mean, you shouldn't do that. And it's, uh, it's, it's without question cost prohibitive. So that, and that was the whole point. I'm sitting there thinking about what I've just created for myself while the kids were napping and enjoying my lunch. And, uh, you know, of course, the, the cost on, on, that, uh, on this particular lunch, if I were to retail it to, you know, through one of our lunch locations, minus the, uh, the rogue beer would be somewhere in the $22 range. So, I mean, we, we just can't do that, uh, which is unfortunate. So, of course, one of the challenges with lunch is to ensure that uh, we take a much more uh, scientific approach to, to how it is we, uh, we source our, our food and, and market it to you guys. So, uh, moving forward, the uh, make good food, which is obviously critical, the paramount, the brand. Uh, I'll just let you know where my inspirations come from. I, uh, I had a job in, um, in, in London, England in the mid-90s. Uh, it was my first job in the uh, food and beverage industry with a catering company called the Admiral Crichton. Wicked job for a 21-year-old. Uh, I highly recommend it. We, you know, we had this great opportunity to serve uh, you know, the rich and famous of London. Sounds tacky, but I, I mean from silver service and, and food quality, it was amazing. So being one of the troops, the, the idea of the company was to serve us as well good food. So they'd outsource to Pret-a-Manger every day our lunches. So uh, you know, in would come this great tray of, of perfectly mounted cardboard sandwich wedges, these great sandwiches. And uh, you know I'd enjoy those, and then to to extend upon that, that's that's what kept me alive. Uh, London in the mid '90s, the uh, the dollar was at 2.63, so I was pretty broke. Uh, that, that being to the pound, and uh, you know the way to sustain myself was either to steal food from the catering company, which did happen, I'm afraid, and or <laughs> uh, eat eat from Pret, which I did a lot, and I still do. Uh, my my wife's family's from London, so we're back uh, at least every other year. And I mean, my favorite lunch experience in that city is just to you know, you know hit the, the South Bank and the Thames, grab a sandwich from Pret, or eat, and uh, you, you know bag of chips and a and a drink. I mean, it, it, it's it's affordability quality and consistency, which is what they emulated, and, and the quality of the product just always stood out. And there's no reason why people shouldn't be able to eat that way all the time. And uh, so that is the inspiration and really what I've, I, I've based lunch on. I, like I've ripped it off, to be clear, is, is the cardboard sandwich wedge and what Pret had to offer. And I just wanted to recreate that for myself here. I mean, I mean it took a while. I mean, we're talking the mid-90s to 2006, so it's not like it happened overnight, of course. But, but this was it. And, and what's amazing about it, too, is, is that what Pret spawned is this amazing derivative of other companies like Eat. Uh, you know, Marks and Sparks, basically any food service provider in the UK right now has to utilize a cardboard sandwich wedge to sell this product. So that was the, the crux of, um, of what I had to do, I thought, to, uh, to, get, uh, to get us going here in Ottawa. So the, um, the cardboard sandwich wedge is just is a funny story. I mean, no one in North America knew what I was talking about. Uh, the Pret had the patent on the thing until 2001. So I, I literally had to try to reverse engineer it through some industrial design companies here in the city. We couldn't get the right price. Finally, we found a supplier to the UK and they airlifted it just in time for our open. It was a $500 fee to get this because the thing is sandwich containers. But what's amazing about the cardboard sandwich wedge is, is that, you know, of course, it, it, it doesn't seal, nor does any of our packaging. It's all exposed to air. So uh, ultimately, I, I can't sell you a day old product, right? Because it, it'll stale. There's a natural staling process. So this was, this was intrinsic to the brand and, and, of course, everything I knew about Pret. So, so we got it in and that was it. Now, making sandwiches, uh, we, we, we of course make a lot of them. 
and, and I focus on sandwiches because that you know it's my it's, it's where my passion's at. I mean, we obviously do soup salads, so all sorts of food product. But sandwiches are critical. Um, we we make them from scratch every day. All all of the ingredients, the spreads, uh, we make them all from fresh. We use in the kitchen every day over 200 ingredients, and we uh, we, we produce with that uh, on average around 45 menu items a day for the uh, for the five to, to sort of six floating locations. Um, in creating that item, of course, it's a collaboration with myself and Maltain and and you guys. I mean, we, we listen to the public as much as we can in terms of what it is that you want, the type of product that you, you, you're looking for, where you want to spend your money in that product that we create, and of course trends. Uh, but ultimately, the sandwich is just a, it's, it's, we're not reinventing the wheel. It's about as simple as it comes, right? So we just take a comfort classic, which in its own right is a bit of a trend, and put a twist on it. So uh, again, not rocket science, other than just trying to make sure that we can we can sustain the volume and, and get that product out to you. And uh, yeah, you know, the sweet savory trick, for instance, which I love, is always the easiest way to pull that one off. And that's what we do with a lot of our products. So it's uh, that's where it's fun in terms of creating what we're doing. But um, but that's uh, that's it. The um, and and in terms of responding to what the public wants, I have this sort of sort of story about chicken. When I first launched the menu, we had three items with, with chicken. Uh, I'll be honest with you, chicken's not my, my favorite thing in the world. I mean, we all love it. It's the ultimate sort of comfort classic, I guess. But when in, in reality, it can, it's just overdone. Or at least at the time it was. I mean, there's chicken shops galore. So we came out with a chicken salad, a chicken sandwich, and a chicken wrap. And I mean, we couldn't keep them on the shelf. Nothing else had been touched. So now we've got seven chicken items. But what's important to know about that is then the chicken that we have to source. If there's going to be that much demand for chicken, of the seven that we have now, three of them are our top best sellers. I mean, it's huge. So chicken, chicken's on my mind all the time. That's the, the irony of it. It's like, a, you know, grain prices, right? So, uh, you know, we source it. We've got a great farm, Femme de Voltigelle, that we use. They use a, a, a vegetable grain-fed uh, chicken. My understanding is, is that those chickens are pretty happy, and uh, we're pretty happy to serve it to you. But it's uh, you know it's important to us to, to source that product and make sure that you know we're offering the best quality of product that we can, uh, and to, to extend on that we we use the thighs now because ironically, people have become so accustomed to eating pumped breasts with too much water content that if we serve a, a really high end chicken breast it actually goes it goes mis people don't understand that that's that's right right they don't want that in their sandwich they want they want some moisture so we use the thigh and it's actually a bit more affordable so it helps us you know, manage to, to stay in business, really, and keep our margins, which are critical, but at the same time, again, ensure that best product. So, so that's making food. Now, making food, of course, through lunch, required, in my estimation, a, a brand concept that would reflect, um, uh, well, we're stuck on this. That's okay. Any ideas? Sorry. Huh? But I can go, I can continue. So the, so the, the brand concept, right, is, is what becomes critical to us. Maybe just open it up on the, the large, or oh, sorry, I can do that. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wait. <laughs> of course I say I can do that. Sorry, Mike. Yeah. So just. I just got a Mac 2A. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So just allow. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, allow. Oh. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. It's good. I'm really glad. It really is a casual crowd. Everyone told me this, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. So making the brand. Um, making the brand is, uh, you know, became became paramount to, of course, making sure that we had a, uh, a product, that, well, a brand that reflected the product that we were selling. So, um, uh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, there we go. I'm a brand sucker. I'm not ashamed to say it. I grew up with it in so many ways, as I'm sure all you did. I, I, I see it as an art. I really do like it aesthetically in all fashions. I mean, the, uh, the, the no-name brand is just so appealing to me, whether I like the product or not. Uh, you know, my fondest memories, you know, coming into an Olympic winter, you know, you know politics aside, were the LA Games and, and, and all their branding around. I thought it was genius. I just remember redrawing it with pencil crayons, you know, probably the only creative thing I ever really did. 
uh, and old Nike adverts, right? Like, I mean, you could just go on with things that have been influences, at least for myself, over the years. So, I, I mean, going into this and knowing the Pret and, and everything that I enjoyed about it as well, had a great brand presence. You know, obviously, we had to put some emphasis and importance on this. So, I uh, collaborated with, uh, with a good friend and industrial designer, Orrin Katz, in Toronto. And uh, we went through this process obviously of, of, of coming up with, um, with all sorts of different logo types. Uh, we, we, we did integrate each year, but I've got sheets upon sheets once we decided on the actual lunch logo of, of colored charts, uh, uh, marrying the little N to the L-U-N-C-H to, to really come up with what we thought was right. So I mean, every step of the way is just that, as I'm sure for all of you, just a very thoughtful process. And of course the name lunch, um, I, was, uh, I, I was really, most people didn't want me to use it. And uh, I, I, I know now why. I mean, we don't, we don't really perform well in breakfast or dinner. So, uh, you know, it, we, we probably will do well in the longer term, I think. It's just a great room for us to grow. But uh, yeah, lunch is lunch. And the other thing I should note is, is that um, most of you, or a lot of you, it's, it's amazing, think of us as Think Lunch. And um, just so the, to get it straight, uh, Think Lunch was free. Uh, Lunch.com and .ca were in the $150,000, $100,000 range. So when we were first starting, it was uh, un, you know, clearly cost prohibitive. So we did a short list of URLs that we thought would work, and, and Think Lunch was it. And then, of course, we wanted people to go to the website, so we put it on our external signage on that Bank Street location. And there goes the story. Most people go, ah, Think Lunch. We're like, yeah. So it worked because we thought it was th cerebral. So we had fun with that, and that was, uh, that was it. Uh, the last two years, especially, have been a lot of fun uh, with the brand. It's evolved. It's maturing. Uh, I've got a, uh, well, to, to, to sort of put some of this into context, I, I, one of my first um, cooks by the name of Peter Woisbun, he, uh, he turned out not to be a very good cook, so I fired him and uh, rehired him as our, uh, as our, our, our graphic designer. So he does, uh, <laughs> he does all of our aesthetic. I mean, it's so funny, we'll, we'll just be sitting around the dinner table, and uh, especially with the truck. The truck's been a, a real kick for this because, you know, we'll get invited to an event and we'll, We'll just all call up Peter. I'm like, I need a truck on skis. And uh, the next thing you know, we've got a truck on skis. So Pete's been really good for that. Um, that and the last two years have involved brand placement, um, especially uh, we, this is my first year ever advertising. By that, I mean 2013, of course. We, um, we work with, uh, with Herd Mag. Who you all know, and uh, you know, obviously those guys are fantastic for the city. It's the first time I've ever spent money on advertising, and we just think it's a, you know, a really great collaboration. I, I mean that, and I was able to afford to. Uh, we were gold sponsor of the Ottawa Dragon Boat Festival, which was r really huge for us, and uh, we've been uh, we've played a supportive role in a number of other arts and uh, ath athletic uh, and not for profit events. So I mean, this is just a, a way I'd like to see the brand grow. You know, obviously you know, we're an Ottawa-based company. I'm an Ottawa guy. We, we like, you know, it's important obviously for that brand to have its presence and its, its, its role in the city. So that's what we've been able to do for the last couple of years. And um, yeah, so, yeah, well, it'll get there. <laughs> the, um, so the, the brand then was really critical in going to my next section of making space. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why. Um, the, the start of this whole project making space meant uh, I needed space. I mean, no, no one would talk to me at all. Uh, I can't tell you how many doors were closed uh, between the years of 2006 and two, well, just one year entirely, but it was, it was really tough. <laughs> With a lot of doors though, and I, you know, you really just thought, you know, we held out, you know, there's always that debate, you do food court right off the get-go. Of course not, I mean, we needed some type of presence. We wanted that brand to, to show off. And um, you know what was lucky in, in having that, that, that brand all ready to go was uh, uh, Brock Leaney, to be frank, from Montreal, and, uh, and TELUS, I had to pitch TELUS on brand compatibility. I think they took a real big chance on us just to allow us the space. I mean, it's bloody expensive space, but I'm still happy to be paying the lease and to be allowed into the building. Because in 2007, <laughs> specifically, there was a, not a lot of commercial real estate in downtown Ottawa. Everything was cost prohibitive. Landlords wouldn't talk to you. I mean, unless you're a national brand, you had a huge covenant, which is fine. I mean, I, if I were a landlord, I'd, I'd have done the same thing. But for the sake of Ottawa, right, you, you, you want to be able to bring in something new. I mean, it's a daunting task. And we learned very quickly that uh, it is a daunting task, for even for us, right? Like the, the price that we pay per square foot at 1,000 square feet in that 
class A plus location is amazing, but it, it comes with a cost. So the little kitchen that we had there, you know, we knew we had to grow quickly. So we, what we've now optimized is a, a 500 square foot model. So half that. I mean, it just makes sense. In fact, I could probably scale it down to 400 if I really had to. And that's what we do. We, you know, we look for these little, little corner spaces, these little small spaces that we can inhabit and put our equipment in. Because right from the get-go, we knew that, that little, at that point, 200 square foot kitchen at the TELUS house was going to manage our immediate expansion. But that wasn't going to last for long. Um, because of course, then you start thinking about food courts. And you need food courts. So it was like starting all over. I, all of a sudden, you re, it sh Ottawa shrinks down even more, especially in the downtown core, and you realize if you're not a shopping mall, where on earth is there a food court? Well, there's, there's three or four of them down here that are, that are worthwhile. Even ours is somewhat questionable, but at least I got into it. So getting into it, though, was, was uh, impossible. It, again, felt like starting over. All they wanted were national brands. All they wanted was a huge covenant. So we, um, by, by ag being aggressive and persistent, we, we found this little, this one little scenario, and, and I'll describe it in its entirety. Public Works um, realized the, the, the management at where we are now, right across the road, the C.D. Howe building at 240 Sparks, they had stopped renewing all the leases on everyone in the food court because they were involved in this massive 10-year retrofit. And they, uh, the last five years of which had been all on the commercial level with them all. So once they got rid of everyone, they had nothing left. And Public Works has a mandate to provide food services for their, for their staff, that being the, 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 the building, right? So um, they didn't have anything left and they needed something quickly. So uh, the management came to us. And what was interesting, we knew that they, the two national, multinational brands had turned down the opportunity. But they had this little closet space, so to speak, that would just bear sort of rough-ins that we knew we could, we could work with. Because our model just needs the fridges now and everything's being done offside. So anyway, we got in. And uh, that was on the, you know, you're in and you'll get a permanent fixed space here. So we were pretty excited about that. Um, and I should stress, that was, that was fun. I mean, we had two weeks in, in reality to set up this little temp space. And we, we built it bare bones, but we built it with just enough integrity, again, with the, engaging our trades and their creativity to, to get something looking really good that would, that would service the, the building and, and, and not compromise our brand. You know, there's a point, right, when you've spent so much money and time trying to create an impression around what lunch is that you just don't want to throw it away with, with something half-assed. So it worked out. The second good thing about 240 is, is that my inevitable space on our decision was to then position ourselves right next to a multinational, which has been great. I mean, uh, not naming names, you know, this one's got 43,000 locations and, you know, I'm at my five. And it creates the perfect juxtapose for how it is I can sell our brand now to new landlords and new scenarios, which is going remarkably well. I mean, I mean our latest expansion uh, has all been a, result, a direct result of that. So uh, and we thank the multinationals for attracting people and then bringing them our way. Because once they come over, they, they rarely go back, we find. Uh, and then from there, in terms of space, so sorry, I, I'm not really clicking through this. So you know, you've all seen them. This is how much fun we have. I love my spaces. They're, um, they're, they're really fun to build. That's my general contacting side. So we get to the truck. You know, everyone loves the truck. I love the truck. The truck for the brand, for the culture of what lunch is, for our profile, has been phenomenal. It's really invigorated our staff, and it's, it's reminded them what we can do creatively with space and have a lot of fun. So I, I thank the world for this truck. And again, for collaborations and, and guys that I've met this past year as a result that have made it really special. So uh, you know, it was one of those scenarios of driving around and the CBC is on the radio in the car and they tell you this thing's happening. I drive to the city to figure out how do I do it. We put the pitch together. And then we, we agreed we were going to do it. I was going to do it either way. But um, I called up Alan Gustafson of Gusto Metals. And uh, he's our steel guy who has a vintage truck collection. And he says, I'm on it. And he found this up by the Enriched Bread Company uh, off of Gladstone in a snowbank, of course. Uh, about this time last year, uh, we, I paid five grand for it in cash in a, in a nice envelope. It was pretty fun. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and then we, we just went for it. Alan ripped it. I mean, it, it, was, it was freezing. It, it took us, well, I, I'll be honest, I thought it was going to be cheaper and take way less time. It wasn't. It cost me as much as, almost as much as a bricks and mortar location, and it took just as much time. Trucks, you know, they got a lot more moving pieces. So uh, I don't always recommend it. And kudos to everyone who did it this past year. I mean, it's a real, it's a real pain in so many ways, but a uh, labor of love, of course. So the, uh, the, the truck, I, I thank it very much uh, you know, for happening and for us being able to do it and the people involved. 
Uh, the person that uh, Alan called right away was uh, Luke Norad, who uh, is a, 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 an artist, a, a sign letter writer now. Um, he, he brought to my attention the word gastrotypographical assemblage, and he got lunch and myself a mention in font feed. So for, I'm sure, a crowd that, uh, you know, there's enough design dorks here. I, I mean, I didn't know about font feed beforehand, but I sure as heck am happy to now. Uh, he, uh, he put together, the Matt who's here put this great video together for us. So we're going to try to play it. I mean, you've probably, you might have seen it. I, uh, I've seen it enough, but I never get sick of it. But it, uh, you know, it's just part of what we were able to do this year. Two weeks in the summer, hot, or late spring. That's it. Matt's here. That deserves a round of applause. Thanks, Matt. So, um, so yeah, just to conclude, it's very simple for me in my mind. The, the, our food plus our space and our brand creates what is our, our lunch experience. Uh, that's, that's, what, that's what we make every day. And, uh, you know, I, I make a point to be behind the cash still every day. It's what I love to do. I mean, it's why I do it. I, I really love engaging with people. I, you know, I've only got an hour, but thankfully in Ottawa, people only eat lunch in one hour. So I see most of you when I can at the, uh, at the respective locations. And I hope that not to change. I mean, things get busy, but, um, but that's, that's what, again, that's what I love the most about this, even if it's a, a bit cliche. So my New, new Year's resolution, uh, just as, as we're growing, is uh, really just to let our our staff embrace the, uh, the culture a bit more and let it flourish. I'm really looking forward to seeing them create their own space within our spaces and I think they've been doing a really great job of it over the last uh, year or so and that comes with our, our client base. It's, it's pretty special for us in the city because Ottawa is such a, a small community in so many ways, especially in the downtown core. Uh, as well, just things to look forward to. I've got two new co uh, kiosk locations opening as a plug, I mean it won't service any of you I'm sure, but uh, we'll release the, uh, the locations uh, in, in the next few weeks, we're just inking them now. And um, we, uh, the company uh, Lunch, or ourselves, we're the, uh, we're the pilot for Ottawa Public Health's um, food uh, nutrient uh, voluntary labeling program. So it's a, it's a huge opportunity for us to play uh, a leader in the, within the Ottawa food community. I mean it's a whole new dimension to how we look at our product and that's just going to be information for you guys and for us. It's a great learning experience. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, really, it's uh, again a, a real honor knowing who else has spoken here before for Creative Mornings to have invited me. So I appreciate that. And, uh, and again, for Hub putting it on. And hopefully for me to meet more of you, it's, uh, it's really fascinating. And uh, yeah, so thanks. Thanks for listening to this.
Thanks a lot, Tim. Guys, as usual, we've got, uh, obviously, the rest of the night for questions and answers, but I'm sure you guys have some questions. We'd love to hear them. Matt? Um, so, uh, after I produced that video, uh, I, I, they gave me a shirt to wear, like one of the, uh, the, the lunch truck shirts, and I was walking down the street wearing it, and someone stopped me, and they said, hey, do you work at lunch? And I was like, no, no, I, I just got the shirt somewhere, and they were like, oh, it's, that's the new truck. That's really cool. That's, like, that, that's awesome. And I was like, listen. Well, on that note, and I forgot to mention it too, I, I could probably open 20 locations and I had never gotten the press that I did for, uh, for, for building this truck. So again, it was a fun creative process. We knew that it was going to have residual benefits. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to divulge my cheap tricks, uh, though it wasn't that cheap. So I, 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 I but, uh, but yeah, uh, it's nice of you to say. Uh, I, I got to start selling swag. That's the big thing, you know. I think people would buy it. Yeah, well, we, I hope. <laughs> Are you saying that you didn't anticipate like the response? Like, oh, I certainly, do, I, I certainly. Is there like a plan? Oh, let's make this go, go viral or whatever. Let's have this have a great like impact. Or was that thought there, or was this more like, oh wow, we didn't expect this uh, response? You know, I'd be lying if I didn't say that that thought's always there and things that you do, right? I, I mean, time is precious. I, I don't have enough of it. So if we're going to commit to something, and especially money, uh, there has to be. You know, there has to be all angles considered. I, I, I mean, at the risk of, you know, again. Well, no, we just knew that we knew that there was going to be a lot that, that came with it. Yeah, I mean, it's a big trend. I, I, I mean, I don't know if I know. I, I couldn't have possibly known how big the trend was, or or what people were looking for specifically within the trend. But we know it exists. So you, you want to stay on the pulse and, and be a part of it. To be frank, the only thing about the truck that made sense to me was is that I just keep on trying to to inhabit different space, right? Like, I, I mean, if I could shrink something down literally into a closet, I mean, it would make sense. To, again, based on what it cost me to operate bricks and mortar. So that's why the truck made, made a lot of sense. And just to expand to do markets, too. I, I mean, it's I was a little. a great example of like, trying to do something a little different and you know, really sticks with people. Yeah, I think so. And I hope so. And I hope people understood why we did it, too. I mean, we, it's just going to keep on going. I mean, for us, it's the best thing I could have to, to, to do these events now. I mean, more than just a, a fixed location, it really enables us. So, and again, Sharif was looking for the plug, so I'll give it to the food rally. It was killer. I mean, it was such a fun day. And it was really great that we were able to be a part of that. I mean, if I didn't have a truck, I wouldn't be a part of it. And you know, of course, there's exposure with that. But of course, there's, there's community you know, benefits on the charitable level. There's, uh, you, you, again, just additional exposure. There's the fun that we had doing it. I mean, it's just a creative outlet. And, and obviously, again, not being creative myself, it's fun to promote it and to see it you know, really happening. And that's where the trucks you know, at least been a catalyst to more of that within our brand. I, you know, it's it's a great question. I mean, you never want to see. I think growing is important. Um, Ottawa becomes pretty small in a, in a lot of ways. So you'll see what will happen this year. We've got you know some creative means of of, of growing the brand, but um, I, I'm, I fear for other communities. I mean, it, it becomes really difficult. I, I live in Westboro. It's really difficult to conceive of a location in Westboro. But we look all the time. I mean, I walk down the streets all the time. We, you know, back to my story where I couldn't get any, any real estate. Now people throw stuff at me, and it's just the numbers don't make sense. And that's the big problem. Commercial leasing is, uh, you know, the, the, at least the cap rates in certain communities right now are detrimental to uh, promoting, uh, and we all know it, promoting uh, independent business. It's just it's it's cost prohibitive. So that's where we've had to look at creative means of finding smaller space in order to do it. Uh, those spaces do exist in certain communities, but the volume is just not there because there's not enough of a mix of of daytime office workers. Like, uh, we, I'd love to do more business on weekends, but then I'd be restricted just to weekends and I'd be paying the same that I paid on here. I mean, it's really daunting. And I don't think shopping malls are there yet, though they're really making this push right now. I mean, probably just to find space for Holtz, but uh, you know, I didn't say that. <laughs> the, uh, but yeah, it's tough. Ottawa, you know, can, can, so yes, we'd love to look at new markets one day. I mean, the trouble is I, I still feel like uh, it's a crossroads for us. It'll be interesting to see how we manage that. I've got kids. It's tough to fathom being in other cities all the time. So uh, we'll wait and see how it goes. But I mean, we, 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 there's always a plan. We, we, we think about it, we talk about it, but my, my immediate focus is, is my community, my businesses, and how we, how we sustain those and, and just keep things going. There's a lot of room for growth for us. We just have to be you know, creative as to, as to where we find the space so that we can afford to, to maintain and, and serve the product that we do. What about collaborative effort, like something like Katie's Market, where you can have like sort of, sort of kind of a 
for sure. I love collaborative efforts. Yeah. I mean, the trouble though is that this industry, a lot of people don't talk. It's very competitive. I, I, it's, I've had a coffee with a couple, to, a couple times with different uh, newer competitors. Like when we came on, I think we were really, you know, in 2008, we were pretty, pretty fresh. There were, there were a lot of other of us and, uh, in so many ways. And then, then there's a few more, and a lot more now, in fact. And uh, yeah, I mean, the truck community is good for that because, uh, you know, you can chat a lot. But um, yeah, send, uh, send Warren and Dave my way. I'm sure we can do something really cool. <laughs> I love their product. That's kind of along my question, and I know in the, especially the chef-owned restaurants, there's quite a community. Yeah. And um, Matthew Carmichael was here about a year ago, and he explained kind of how the different restaurants help each other out. And I'm just wondering for, um, that's the chef-owned restaurants, but well, at, at this level, especially within the, the food truck rally, is there its own, is, do you guys have your own community where you try to help each other out, or are you kind of pointing towards a more competitive nature? I think immediately, just in what I'm doing specifically, maybe, yeah. But uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a small investor in another restaurant in the city. I, I mean, I think that I'm part of the, co the community on that level. I just, you know, chef-owned restaurants are, are a very unique experience. And I think, you know, from a food positive and a food community, that's what's most important. And, and I, I certainly do my best to engage with that as much as possible. Um, I, I, again, I'm not averse to chatting with anyone. It's just... Uh, I mean, we, we saw it when we first came in from a corporate level. You know, you get a team of suits coming in from, you know, big national, and they, they don't introduce themselves, but they start sniffing around your product. And, you know, you know I just, I mean, we're an open book. So uh, I, I don't see, I'm not, uh, the, the food truck community is unique, I have to say. But then I, I'm kind of in and out, out of that one as well, because I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not, a sh you know, they're mostly chef-owned as well, right? So, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a chef. It's not a fault of mine. It's just uh, it's just a reality. Again, I, I warned you. I've got no training, so. But I, I you know I, I have reasonably good taste, so uh, I, we we manage. But uh, yeah, I, I mean it's an interesting question, uh, only because uh, I don't. I would love to have more conversation with people in my industry, just general peer groups. That's why actually I like the hub. I mean I'm, I'm learning so much more about it, uh, just on the level too of how we grow the company in, in so many ways, uh, because there's so many uh, you know really interesting people in this group. But it's uh, I, I get just stuck in my own little bubble half the time, and I think that's the fault of a lot of people in my business as well. There's not enough. I mean we we don't have big fancy dinner offs or cook offs, right? It's not really what we do, so it's uh, you, you, it's difficult to engage on that level. But yeah, I mean. I'm certainly not averse to. And I, I warned Sharif too, the kids, I don't get out enough anymore. I used to get out all the time. I remember living in Ottawa and being very social. Now I'm, uh, this is my big night out. So thanks, <laughs> thanks for having me. Uh, Matt, you already asked a question, so I'm gonna go to the gentleman behind you and then come back. Oh yeah, uh oh, okay, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Do you think uh, franchising's in your future? Well, that's another one of those big questions. I mean, this is why my, my, my family, my friends, they hate me because we just sit around the table and talk about this crap all, all the time. So, yeah, I could say yes. I could say no. I mean, what, what, the real inspiration in this city, of course, is Tracy with Bridgehead. I mean, she hasn't. And the way I see growing in Ottawa at this point, the way we do things, I, I wouldn't have to. I, I mean, the nice thing about franchising in principle is that to hit another market, yeah, 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 I mean, there's, there's, but then there's so many strategies, can of worms. I just can't imagine that happening anytime too soon. But if it ever did, I mean, show me the money. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds horrible. <laughs> uh, I, I, I got to go with this gentleman because he was patient. Then I'll come around. Sorry. Okay, so uh, obviously there must be catering involved in where you are. But you didn't bring that up, or is that something you have? No, catering's huge. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I was chatting with with Aaron from Magpie earlier, and you know they've ordered from us. We, we, we uh, it accounts to probably 15 to 20 percent of my my to uh, total revenue. I mean, sometimes I feel like my retail locations are lost leaders just to get the catering. To be quite frank, like that's what we do. So. You have a lot of business in that area. Oh, huge, huge. I mean, we have clients whose staffs, whole staffs, we feed on a daily basis. I mean, and a very broad spectrum. And it's what I love to do. There, there's peripheral menus within what we do as well that just aren't on our, our retail level. Uh, it's difficult for us to market that on the whole. And again, it's dangerous, right? You don't want to, I, I don't want to do anything half fast. So, you know, we develop relationships with corporate clients and then, you know, within the facility that we have, we, 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 we do all sorts of stuff for them. So, yeah, it's just another creative outlet if that's what you're getting at. I mean, that, it's. Uh, you just did bring it up in your, in your, I had to assume there was a. Oh, yeah. Large 
I think yeah, everyone, everyone's in the same same race for that one for sure. There's just a lot of business out there for it, and it's great. I mean, it's you know, obviously, I don't have to build a location. I mean, I think I've seen companies go under and keep their catering end going just because they've established relationships with with clients. I mean, it's not the heyday of the '90s, right, where the feds were just dropping funny money on everything. So it's it's much more competitive, but uh, there's certainly a resurgence. 2008 was a tough year to start business, right? Like. We, uh, we saw that crash, that crash, uh, and then the bus strike. Oh, God, that's a tough year to start a company, I'll be honest with you. It was a very painful experience. What uh, municipal regulations have you come across that uh, got like, your mind? <laughs> okay, that's a great question, because it's going to answer one of my other little pet peeves. Our Bank Street location, okay, the, the service counter, sorry, it's, gonna, it's, it's, it's really high. And I'm sorry about that. There's a, it's, it's on grade and, and off slab when we built, there was a one foot elevation off a concrete slab. And building code in Ottawa says that one step is dangerous. So we had to actually build up an extra step off the concrete slab. And it was because of the dimensions of the space too. If, you know, within universal accessibility, if we had a grade at everything, it would have been a skate park. So, I mean, we had to go up. Anyway, you know, so there's one that baffled me. I mean, like, really? And yeah, it was really, so we had to do that. I mean, everything else makes sense to me, especially with our relationship right now with Ottawa Public Health. I, I think it's really cool. I mean, it, especially the way, you know, seeing how they have to operate with a, with a huge array of clients as well and, and purveyors in the city and just, you know, all sorts of different, uh, you know, concerns in articulating, you know, the real concerns of food handling. I, I mean, I don't disagree with anything that I've come across. Building in Quebec is a real pain in the rear end though. <laughs> I will tell you that everything baffles me over there, and I do, there's no fault of Quebec. It's just it is what it is. It's, it's really creative, but I, and I'm just coming out of that hell. So that's another fresh <laughs> subject. Or uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I I go ahead. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, it's just a general question. Like um, you said, how much you love brands, and, uh, and you've obviously you know been very successful. In, like, building brands, so just what would be your do's and don'ts, you know, when it comes to, you know, I think a lot of people here are also interested in building brands, I know I am, so what would be like, with your experience, do's and don'ts? You know, this is, know really this is what worries me though, I, I mean, I don't think I'm, I'm capable of, of, of answering it, I, I mean, honestly, a lot of it's luck. I, I mean, well, no, it's, 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 I was thinking about other aspects of it, you know, and, and a lot of it came back to the real estate. You know, I've signed so many leases and I bought a building without any cash or financing, you know, like it's just, a lot of it is just stick to your conviction and, uh, and just dive in. I mean, there's not, there's no other way to do it. I mean, I've got a friend right now who's, is probably at, at, at that point, at that starting stage. And, uh, you know, really, it's, if you, if you want to do it and you're that convicted, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to sound preachy, but I mean, the only way to do it is just to, just to dive in. If you don't, it's just not going to happen. I mean, because, I mean, in that instance, coming back to it, I, I mean, without real estate, I couldn't have had financing, right? So, you know, you're, just, you're always cart before the horse. So, you know, really, at some point, you just have to go in with some blind luck and say, okay, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign that lease and I'm going to find the money one way or another. And uh, I've done that a lot. So you say it's commitment. Oh, for sure. Well, that's, you know, it's total brand commitment. And it's passion. Again, I, I don't sleep at night because I, I just think about this. It's, it's awkward. Very awkward. <laughs> got time for one or two more. We've got them. Uh, I was just wondering, since you mentioned earlier, <coughs> excuse me, because of uh, the type of product you sell that you can't sell as a day old sandwich, um, do you have arrangements? Or what happens with your product at the end of the day that is unsold? You, you know, we tried off the get-go of distributing it to, um, to, to the mission or to, to, to any services that would take it, and we have done that on a number of occasions. Now we're more in the science of volume. We, we really have it down. We just sell out. I mean, it's awkward. And Ottawa, again, has very strict dining patterns. It's an interesting city. I relate it to high school. The bell goes. There's a milk run on the elevators. And, like, really, even 11.30 to 1.30 is a stretch. 12 to 1 is it. And we know what we're going to do in that. I, I mean, that's just experience now. Uh, from when we first started, I, I nearly lost my shirt, you know, in terms of risk and 
trying to bankrupt something a few times over. We, we would try to carry a product as long as we could through the end of the day, and we, we would give it away. But I mean, the problem is, is that I just can't, you know, I couldn't afford to carry that. And we did that more just to, you know, like throwing the net out there to try to get as much business as we could. We saw in some ways a little more, uh, you know, revenue over the, over the course of the, the latter hours of the day, but it just doesn't make sense in our market right now. But um, yeah, again, in terms of collaborations, and ways of, uh, of making sure, that, but, but um, we're pretty precise on our levels now that we don't have much wastage. And when and where, where we do, we'll just drive it over to, to the mission. Last one, anybody? One more question. When's the, when's, when in 2014? January 20th, sorry, to be very exact. Uh, unless I really screw up now, but that's it. We're in the final push. I should tell you. I could tell you about my morning, but I won't. It was, uh, you know, it's it's fun to be at this stage. It's it's very, you know, it's these are the butterflies. You know, you don't want it to to go, but it's going, and it's. Uh, Is that in the food court there? Or no, it's on. Uh, it's between Portage Three and Portage Four. If you're going, uh, if you cross the bridge, right on Maisonneuve, there's that first overpass. We're right between the two transit systems. There's a big, huge Tim Hortons, and there's us. So back to positioning with multinationals, or sorry, nationals in this case. Well, no, they're in the States now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dubai. Ah, yes, of course. And <laughs> Afghanistan, right? Like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. For as long as it, yeah, needless to say, it's, uh, it's a huge coup for us. And I, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to getting that location open because it's, uh, yeah, you know, you need, you need the ones that make sense financially for the, you know, for us to, to push on. And it's, it doesn't change anything that we do. It just allows us to do better and more product. So, yeah, January 20th. Got an announcement to make obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, and the truck. Everyone loves the truck. So the brand place, we've got the truck at Knacker Talk for, the, uh, for a few weekends over the winter. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, you know, they've got the, the big uh, Eastern Canadian championships. Uh, of course, again, back to you know, good brand uh, associations. We feel that uh, these type of events, uh, our product fits really well. So we're looking forward to being a part of it. It's going to be, it's actually, I'm not a cross country skier. I'm, I'm downhill. I, I probably should cross country ski more, but uh, they've got a beautiful facility up there and it's actually really close. It's right off of uh, that Vans Lee. And uh, from the looks of it, it's a huge event. They get uh, you know, four or 5,000 uh, skiers in over three days. So uh, we're, we're up there, we're, 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 we're doing our sort of events menu and coffee and hot chocolate. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So again, they, they, these we look at just more as opportunities for the experience. I mean, this is, not, uh, this is not us opening up a new location, but we're really excited about being a part of it and growing with these guys. It's a bit of an experiment this year, but uh, again, really cool facility and, uh, and a fun local event. So. If you're looking to get outdoors this winter and need a truck experience, that's where we'll be. Awesome. Thanks so much. Kim.